What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, two division world champion Puerto Rican superstar boxer Danny Swift Garcia will be making his debut at 154 pounds against Jose Benavidez Jr. With that said, Danny Garcia, Jose, ben uh, Jose Benavidez Jr., they held their press conference, you know, um, for the uh, to promote their upcoming fight. And with that said, uh, Danny Garcia, he had some interesting things to say, right? He stated that, you know, uh, after he knocked out Jose Benavidez Jr., they have a plan in, in, in the making to, for him to face off against a uh, two-time junior middleweight world champion who is currently the undisputed junior middleweight world champion, superstar boxer, Jamel Lyons Only Charlo. So Danny Garcia and Jamel Charlo, we both know with the PBC Premier Boxing Champions, founder and advisor Al Heyman. And so with that said, you know, uh, Danny Garcia has been uh, making claims that, you know, um, he stated that the 154, 154 pound division needs a big name in the division and he's the biggest name that could be uh, in the division, right? So he's looking to become a uh, three division world champion, right? Uh, he's looking to, you know, um, solidify his legacy uh, and he, he wants to be a Hall of Famer, obviously, right? Uh, with that said, Danny Garcia, you know, um, Danny Garcia has had, you know, uh, some big fights in his career. He's fought against some of the best fighters in the world. Now, when he came to welterweight, Danny Garcia, he came up short, right? Uh, Danny Garcia came up short. He's 36 wins, three losses, no draws, 21 wins by way of knockout. He is uh, 33 years of age, five foot eight, with a 68-inch uh, army, right? So when he fought the likes of uh, um, Keith Thurman, he lost, okay? When he fought the likes of, you know, um, uh, um, Sean Porter, he lost. Uh, when he fought the likes of Earl Spence Jr., uh, he lost. Uh, so, you know, he came up short in the welterweight division, right? Those are his three losses uh, is when he was in the um, welterweight division. So when Danny Garcia was in a junior welterweight division, you know, uh, Danny Garcia, he was he was at one point in time considered the best junior welterweight in the world, right? Uh, so with that said, he lost to those guys. Now Danny Garcia is going to move up. His style, in my opinion, don't translate to 154. Okay, it's not a slight to Danny Garcia. Uh, it's not, you know, uh, doubting Danny Garcia. But at the end of the day, Danny Garcia, you know, uh, he's a flat-footed counter-puncher with big punch, big punching power. You know, he got power at, you know, uh, um, he got power in both hands, right and left. You know, um, you know, uh, he, he can knock you out with one punch. But Danny Garcia is not a mover, and he's not the biggest guy in the world. So when you place Danny Garcia at 154 against these big guys who are ranging, like Jamel Charlo, 35 wins, one loss, one draw, 19 wins by way of knockout, 32 years of age, six feet tall with a 73 and a half inch arm reach, and that's, that's fundamentally sound, technically skilled, that can box, has a high ring IQ, uh, you know, um, can move around the ring if he so chooses. You remember he and his identical twin brother, they was viewed as you know, uh, um, Jamal Charlo was viewed as, you know, uh, the best puncher, and Jamel Charlo was viewed as the better pure boxer, right? But once Jamel Charlo got with uh, uh, Derrick James, soon to be two-time trainer of the year, uh, well-renowned trainer, future Hall of Famer, once Jamel Charlo got with Derrick James, you know, the ties turned, right? Uh, and Jamel Charlo became a boxer puncher, right? And he's knocking out fighters, but he also can outbox fighters. He just knocked out, in both of his rematches, he got knockouts. Uh, he lost to Tony Harrison. Uh, that's the uh, first loss in his career. He lost to Tony Harrison, the first and only loss. He avenged it with a knockout. Uh, he had a draw against Brian Castano in their first undisputed uh, showdown. And it was ended in a draw. Second fight, he got a 10th round knockout. So Jamel Charlo, he fought unification bout against uh, Jason Rosario. Jamel Charlo stopped Jason Rosario, right? You know, uh, Jamel Charlo has a very, very high ring IQ. Uh, he can move around the ring. He's agile. He's much bigger than Danny Garcia. And we saw when Keith Thurman was outboxing uh, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, uh, his aggressiveness in and out, you know, uh, was giving Danny Garcia problems. 
those styles are bad matchups. I actually think that Jose Benavidez Jr. is going to give Danny Garcia problems. I think that Jose Benavidez Jr.'s style, his size, his range, his uh, uh, um, his jab is going to give Danny Garcia problems, okay? And I can see Danny Garcia struggling. I can see Danny Garcia winning a, 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 a split decision over uh, um, Jose Benavidez Jr. I can see an upset that Jose Benavidez Jr. actually beats Danny Garcia, right? Uh, um, because of the style and the size and, the, you know, uh, um, the mobility, you know, uh, 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 Danny Garcia is not the most athletic guy. Again, he's very flat-footed in his approach. You know, um, he's a counter-puncher, so he's not very active uh, when when he's fighting. And that's a problem, right? That's a that's a problem, especially when you're going up against uh, guys that are much bigger than you. And, and so, you know, um, I think that Danny Garcia, you know, uh, is biting off more than he could chew calling out Jamel Charlo. Now, is Danny Garcia... A bigger name than Jamel Charlo, possibly. I don't know. After Jamel Charlo is became undisputed, I think that Jamel Charlo. I have Jamel Charlo, uh, the number three best pound for pound fighter in the world. Okay, uh, I got uh, Terence Crawford at number one, and I got Errol Spence at two, and Jamel Charlo at three. Okay, and I think that you know um, his popularity. You know, a lot of people don't fancy Jamel Charlo and Jamal Charlo, but you can't deny their skill set, right? You can't deny their talent. You can't deny Jamel Charlo's accomplishments. So with that said, uh, I believe that Jamel Charlo right now is just as big of a star as Danny Garcia. Now, uh, the numbers may not reflect it, you know, so Danny Garcia is possibly the A-side, you know, because of, uh, he is a, you know, a bigger name, right? Uh, people, I, I, I do believe that Danny Garcia is a more well-known name. So with that said, um, I would love to see Danny Garcia, Jamel Charlo. Namesake wise, Jamel Charlo, he got a fight coming up. He got a fight uh, against Tim Zhu, right? Uh, and they're waiting for the announcement for the biggest fight in the sport of boxing between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford to be announced so they could uh, go ahead and set the date for Tim Zhu, who's the mandatory challenger for Jamel Charlo. So once they set that date, then you'll get the date for Tim Zhu and Jamel Charlo. Now, I saw Tim Zhu fight against. Um, uh, uh, Terrell Goucher, I wasn't impressed. Uh, Terrell Goucher dropped him. Uh, I think Tim Zhu so, showed a lot of flaws in his game, and I think that you know, uh, um, I think that uh, Jamel Charlo is going to stop Tim Zhu. I think he's going to beat Tim Zhu, uh, and then obviously Danny Garcia, he has to get past, you know, uh, he has to get past um, Jose Benavidez uh, Jr. That's no walk in the park. That's no guarantee. I favor Danny Garcia's. Danny Garcia is Danny Garcia to win the fight, but that's no walking apart for Danny Garcia. It's no guarantee. I think it's going to be a tougher fight than people expect. So, uh, but if he does get past him and Jamel Charlo gets past uh, uh, Tim Zhu, as I expect him to, uh, it looks like they could be on, on a collision course. And uh, I think that Jamel Charlo may be the first person to stop Danny Garcia in his career. I, I think that he'll be the first person to stop Danny Garcia in his career. Uh, Danny Garcia has never even hit the canvas. You know, he's never been truly visu uh, visually, uh, visu visually hurt in any fight. You know, um, I mean, Keith Thurman hit him with some big, big punches, man. And Keith Thurman did hurt him. Uh, Errol Spence was breaking him down, but they didn't drop him. Uh, they didn't stop him. But I think the skill set, the size, the ring IQ, the approach of Jamel Charlo, I think Jamel Charlo be the first fighter to stop Danny Garcia. Now, namesake wise, it's a big paycheck for Jamel Charlo. It's a big paycheck for Danny Garcia. It's a big fight for both of them guys. Um, but I think that Jamel Charlo beats Danny Garcia and I think he stops Danny Garcia. So we got to see how this unfolds and plays out. But uh, that's all I got for y'all, man. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.